The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Karen, what's with this big box of laptops? So you know how I'm really into upcycling? Yeah. Meaning taking old things and repurposing them in new projects? Right. Well, I saw this neat video online where this guy took laptop LCDs and repurposed them into like a lamp, like a window shaped lamp. Oh, so he was using the backlights? Yes. Oh. And I got these from my buddy Nate over at Remachines locally. It's a electronics recycling place. Right. So I stopped by and he gave me a couple crates. So I think we should have enough to make a lamp. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take apart several laptops and try to find four screens that are pretty close to the same size. And then we also need to find four screens that we can get working that have LED backlights instead of CFL backlights. And also we need to look at the circuit boards and kind of reverse engineer the pinout or find the data sheet. Mm -hmm. So basically we need 3.3 volt logic, 12 volts for the LED backlight and then ground. And there'll also be probably an enable pin or a PWM pin or both to actually make the LED backlighting turn on. Cool. But if we can find those, we should be able to get them to light up. I think we can do it. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Oh, look, I knocked some hot glue loose. Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. You know, if these laptops are too old, they're not going to have LED backlights, Karen. Yeah. So see this thing dangling? This is an inverter board, which takes DC voltage, bumps it up to about 1,000 volts AC, and uses it to power the miniature CFL, compact fluorescent lamp, that's in older laptops. So I think around 2008, 2009, laptops started using LED backlights. So hopefully we can find newer screens. So if you see this, that's a file. Well, we're going to remove the LCD portions and just use the backlights, correct? That's the idea. Is No Man's Sky the biggest lie ever? This one looks like it's uh, LED backlit. Does this one, before I continue taking it apart? Let's take a look. What's this? What is, what is that? I don't know. Jank. Oh, wow. This, this laptop looks really old, but. It says this cover contains fluorescent lamp. Oh, well, that's a file then. So that's a no. Yeah. So if we have like an artificial light in here, will that make us feel like we're outside and they're there's windows. Maybe. So we're making windows from Max. <laughs> <laughs> this LG screen here, it looks a lot like the ones we used on our pinball machines, which I have the pinout for already. Yay. I'm going to mostly remove this header, mostly. Do you need a disk drive for anything? Uh, gee, no. Hmm, let's see here. Uh, it looks like the pinout matches, although this is, uh, I think this might be a lower resolution panel. The PWM and the on-off control are right next to each other on this one. That's good. All right, I've got this battery pack here. I've attached it to the power supply, which I think we need in order for the logic to work. And I've also connected that to the uh, PWM for luminance control and the backlight on-off control. So the backlight on is, uh, is a high signal and also the PWM will just turn that completely on as well. So this... This may work. As long as this um, screen works, I think this may work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess my point is, um, yes. I mean, if the LCD is dead, though, this won't work. All right, I think we're ready for a test on this one. Wop, 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 All right, putting in 12 volts. Turning on power. Yay, we got one. Ben, Felix, and I continued scrapping old laptops. We ended up finding five LED backlit screens that would be compatible with our project. Once they were removed from their cases, we wired them up and made sure they were working. Hey, let's try removing the LCD and see what it looks like without the LCD. That sounds like a good idea. How do you do that? Um, you just lift up this metal around the tabs. Didn't that guide you were reading say that we could cut the ribbon cable? I don't remember. That sounds pretty scary. I don't like cutting things. 
Well, sometimes you have to. Like if you're in the Civil War and like you stub your toe, you have to cut off your leg. That's <laughs> life. That's what <laughs> all the people say. Yeah, that would suck. Oh, ooh, this look at that. Part. Oh, I think we had to cut the ribbon cable because we need the circuitry for the screen. Can we can we turn on and make sure which which part works? Sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Cool. I feel like I'm outside. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to rip off the LCD of the rest? Once sure. Because we have like five working ones now. Sweet. We got at least five of the screens working, but we only need four for the lamp. Okay. So we have spares. We have four screens, two that are similar size, but smaller, and mm -hmm. two that are also similar size. So we'll make a, a four-sided lamp, and I think to make it aesthetically pleasing, if we alternate the sizes, one, then we won't have two that are kind of close, but a little off next to each other, so you don't notice as much. So we'll have two small sides and two bigger sides that'll that be sense. opposite. Can we mock something up on the table here? So, four-sided lamp. It's gonna take up a reasonable amount of space, but whatever. So, can go like these, and then each panel should. So there's gonna be cutouts within these shapes yep. and the panels so be behind it? So, we'll need, I think, three layers. So we'll need a, a back layer to keep this in, a mm -hmm. middle layer to, to, space it to, out. to space it out, and edge this. And this. Then the front layer, which is this. And then a face that's, well, this would be more like the back layer, but we'd have a face that possibly has a pattern on it. Yeah, do you want to like do... cut some shapes in this? Yeah, super fancy. Like Zelda shapes? <gasps> Maybe, do you like a repeating Triforce? Oh, man. Hey, so I um, consulted with Miss Corbeil on uh, what kind of a switch she'd like, and she said she really likes this one here. And then we also discussed whether she'd like to have a pigtail coming out of the frame or just have a plug right inside the frame. So she decided she wants to have a plug in there. And then I pulled out a 12 volt, one point, or uh, well, yeah, 1.2 amp um, power supply. And uh, we have a 3.3 volt regulator that I'm all wiring together. And once I got that set, I can give it to Mr. Heckendorn and he can figure out where he'll put the, uh, the jack on the frame and, uh, oh yeah, and the switch too. That's what I'm working on. After Felix gave me a rough idea of where the wires were going to go in the case, I designed a prototype of the lamp in Illustrator and laser cut my pieces out of chipboard. I'm going to use this cheaper material first before cutting the final version in MDF. So there are a lot of problems that can come up during the design process that you might not have been able to anticipate. We got the basic design for the frame done, and I really wanted to do kind of a base prototype so I could see how we we're gonna do the wiring because if we wanted to do it quick and easy, we could just run the wires out the back and have them all on the inside, but they'd be exposed and it'd be kind of ugly and granted you'd only see it if you look down into the lamp, but I don't like it. I want it to be a more finished design. So I'm gonna see if I can hide the wires within the frame, which makes it a little trickier. So we have a full front layer that's on the face like this and then we have a full complete frame on the back. Uh, what goes between those are these layers that hold the LCD in place. So they are essentially act as brackets. And these are the layers that I need to weave my wires into. And that gets a little complicated. So the material we're going to be using for our final design is about half the thickness of our LCDs, which means I'm gonna have to cut two separate layers. So I think what I can do, because if I were to cut a strip down the middle of this, then this would no longer be connected and it would no longer be holding my LCD. So I need to try to maintain as much of this shape as possible. So what I'm gonna do is have half of a channel in one layer and then I'm gonna have another layer behind it that has the other half of the channel going here. So I will get a solid channel all the way across but I don't have to cut my pieces completely in half. So I'm gonna see if I can do that. <laughs> Once my final design was where I wanted it, it was time to cut the final pieces. Unfortunately, the MDF that we had was too big to fit in our laser. I took a trip to the Bajri, a local hackerspace that I founded, and cut our material into 12 inch by 24 inch sections. These are going to be perfect. When this was done, I returned to the shop, lasered my final pieces, and started assembling the unit. So after making a few prototypes out of cheaper material, I was fairly confident that my design was at least 
90% of the way there, or to a point where any modifications I would need to make, I could make by hand and it wouldn't look awful. So after my previous prototype, I realized that the backmost layer is flush against the back of the LCD, so if I wanted my wires to be able to come off of there, I had to create an extra channel for them to travel. So I decided that they could just kind of go up and into the frame, so I made these little holes, and then these little side channels so that it could round the corner, because these are gonna butt together like this, but, you know, that best laid plans, not always perfect. So I noticed that on this side, I misjudged where these meet and basically it'll work. This top, I didn't need this top hole. That's basically it, but I think it'll be fine. So let me show you how I made these crazy channels. So when I was originally trying to figure out the wire layout, I put all my panels together and I took a picture of it over top and then loaded it into my Illustrator design. And then I just kind of roughly drew where my wires were gonna go so that I could figure out where my channels needed to be. So here's where everything starts. So I figured that I had to get like under and over. So, so my wires first travel through there and then they can come up and out here over there and then the top panel sandwiches down. But so that's one of the other little modifications I had to make. Originally I had this flush but it cuts it off at the corner of the LCD so I had to cut another little channel there to make sure that they could get all the way through. Same thing with right here so they could round that corner. So that sandwich is in there quite nicely. I had to measure the thickness of my wire compared to the thickness of my material so that I made sure that there was enough height when I squished them in here, which there is, hooray. And then this one goes over here through the top layer down into the bottom layer, rounds the corner, and then again has a little notch there so it can come up. So because of the thickness of the LCD in these, I didn't make a back panel, plus I wanted some of the light to come from the back of the panel into the inside of the light so it glows up a little bit, so I didn't want to put a full back covering it. So the wires are somewhat exposed, but they're just gonna go up here to where they wire. And then I also cut <laughs> holes for them to round the corner. So these will come up over down through this hole and then it can come through this notch and through this notch to round that corner and then it can come out here to get to my fourth circuit board over there. I think it's gonna work really well. I'm excited. The last thing we had to do was cut the decorative pieces that the light would shine through. I chose to create the patterns using designs from Zelda because, well, I'm Karen. I assembled these pieces and then handed the project off to Ben for final wiring. We wired up ground, 3.3 volts, and 12 volts so that all of the screens would turn on at the same time. Since these connections are fairly small and delicate, we decided to secure them with some hot glue. This will prevent the connections from breaking. Finally, we tabbed the lamp together and it was complete. So what do you think, Ben? Do you like my lovely lamp? Yeah, it worked out pretty well, and it was a good usage of old laptop screens. Mm-hmm. I'm happy with how it turned out. I think there, there might be like a couple of things I would do a little bit differently. Um, on some of the sides, I just kind of took the symbols and spread them apart so right. that they overlapped, but like on this side, there's a decent amount of solid still left in between the shapes and like yeah. the Triforce symbols, so I might have gone through and I created like a little... That. And op more openings so yeah, that more light could come through. Exactly. So, but and this one we were I like. In, yeah, this one turned out well. Yeah. And this one turned out pretty good. I still think you should have removed the polarization filters. You'd have more light that way. Maybe. Oh, I, I like, I like I the way it something. looks like. Hold on, be right back. So, using my polarized sunglasses, I was able to see that there isn't actually any polarization filter left on these. That must have been bonded to both sides of the LCD. Mm. This is a cool trick you can do if you remove the front polarization filter from your uh, LCD monitor, mm -hmm. you can all, it'll just look like a white screen, but then right. if you put polarized sunglasses on, then it aligns the light and you can actually see the image. Mm. So if you're like Roddy, Roddy, Rowdy, Roddy Piper, you can see what's on the screen, like in They Live. Could you use that oh, to yeah. convey secret messages where it's like, put on your sunglasses yeah. and be like, oh, I can see the secret message. Or if you're like in an airplane and you didn't want anyone to see what was on your laptop, you could just mm. Just rip off the polarization filter, and then you put on your sunglasses. You'd be like, looks like it's time to do some spreadsheets. Yeah! Well, that's all the time we have for today. Have you ever done a project involving upcycling? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you later. Do -do -do -do. She's no right. She's, numb. She's in my head. If I had my little way. 
I eat peaches, peaches every, every day. day. Well, that's right. gross looking. You're ready? You're gross looking. Why are you always so mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it's made up for the part where Doc Ock turns evil where he's like, yes. <laughs> Would you like to sell your teeth? I never saw the Road Warrior again. He exists now only in my memory. Road Warrior and Titanic have the same final line. I was gonna say, I'm like, they wait do. A minute. They do. I know this screen like the back of my hand. Hi there. Hello. Chinese tonight? Yeah. See, I knew exactly what my hand wanted to eat. PC load letter. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.